welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. Where will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this rather delightful, smoky, sultry, grungy kind of look was achieved by using Lethal Cosmetics, Build Your Own Palette and Highlighter. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I chose and how well or otherwise these performed then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy because here it comes hey welcome back from the intro yeah. not quite sure what that was I'm sorry welcome back from the intro <laughs> you will have seen on the intro that I would have shown you the outside of these. Look at the holographicness. Look. I'm a bit of a magpie. I could just sit here and watch this all day. But you're going to want to see the inside of it. Right, so this is the Wavelength Pressed Highlighter in shade Scatter. And the person you can blame for me purchasing this it's Teresa is dead. Now, regular viewers will know she has tempted me in the past. And when you open it up by the mirror, it's got those who shine the brightest cast the longest shadows. That's uber cute. Oh, this is so soft. Haven't swatched this yet. Can you see that? Probably not very well in this light. There we go. Look at that. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah, thank you Teresa. I'm going to enjoy this one. I thought next door had stopped. I apologise if you do hear those sounds throughout the film. But I need to get some filming done because I haven't filmed for a couple of days because I've been back. And here is my Make It Myself Lethal Cosmetics palette. Now, when they send you this, you order the palette and the shades that you want separately. And all the shades come packed individually. Now, I know that seems like a lot of wasted cardboard but it did mean that all the all of the shades arrived intact because one thing I did notice when Makeup Geek did their rebrand and I'm going to be discussing them in my hits and shits so stay tuned um, when Makeup Geek did their rebrand when now the noise my bike's back great been quiet for an hour so I thought it's safe to sit down and film Uh, when they did their rebrand and they sent the um, the neutral and then the colourful palettes out to all the influencers and drama channels, where the hell does that come from? Do you really think they're not going to talk about you because you sent them some makeup? I noticed a lot of the shadows. Um, there was one particular shimmer shadow that everyone was saying was arrived either broken or cracked. So, at least by them sending it out individually, it kept them safe. It also meant that I could trim the little name off of the sticker on the back and stick it above the shade when I put it in the palette so I can actually tell you which shades I've chosen without having to keep flipping them out. So as you can see, a bit of a grungy one. Uh, I've basically got a teal matte and a teal shimmer. 
an indigo matte and an indigo shimmer, two different shades of olive matte, a grey matte and a silver shimmer and a gold shimmer. And that just to me is everything I want in a palette. Now, sadly the UK has now left the EU. Thankfully, I managed to get this ordered and it arrived prior to us leaving. So, I genuinely have no idea. If I order from them again, I honestly don't know if I'm going to pay import tax on them. Seeing as we pay 20% 20, 20 import tax. Plus, depending on who handles it, the minimum charge is 8 quid handling fee. The maximum fee I've had for handling so far is 21. So I'm really hoping um, that we don't get hit with import charges because I really like this system and if I like if I like the shadows I'm going to want to buy more now face is washed moisturized SPF and primed and now my phone is going to buzz as well um, I used some of this today the W7 princess potion this is their version of the Fasali unicorn pink drippy stuff. It's actually really nice. I, I do my moisturiser on my SPF, then I bumble about doing other things, getting the camera set up, getting you know all the brushes together that I want to use, etc. And then I like to put this on before I put my antiperspirant primer on just because I feel like this gives it just a little bit of a of re-moisturisation um, and it also cuts some of the um, SPF can give you a very shiny looking face which if you're combination oily in the T-zone like I am this actually helps knock some of that shimmer back down again which is quite nice now as always this is a teaching channel my chronic pain means I cannot blend very quickly and I also want people who have never picked up a brush before to be able to follow my tutorial as well as someone who is an expert. So there's a speed widget up there, please use it if I'm going too slowly for you. Now um, I say this next bit at the beginning of every film so what I might do in future to save me keep repeating myself is just use the clip from today in future films so if you see the top change in a future film it's because I'm using the uh, video clip from this one right let's get you zoomed in there we go right now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over mm with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, 
I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Right, let's put some colour on these lids, shall we? Oh, I really can't decide which ones to use. Right, I'm going to start off with one of my uh, Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro crease brush, which is a big, round, fluffy brush. And I'm going to start I think I'm going to start with Habitat which is the lighter of the two olives there's quite a bit of kick up in pan I'm just going to tap off as you can see oh, okay. kick up doesn't worry me because it means you're getting pigment onto the brush and you can always go back in and just carefully pick up the excess for the next time round. Now I hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. Starting up here, tiny tiny little circles going in this direction towards the nose. The excess that I tapped off. And when I get to the middle, a bit of a bounce and reverse the direction to come back out. And the reason that I do circles like this is because I'm 45 years old, I've lost 14 stone, 
over the last few years, which is just under £200. So the skin on my eyelids moves. And by doing this circular movement, you're gently moving the skin so that you don't get the barcoding or tiger stripe effect. Now the only place on me that that doesn't work is just here where I've got these super, super deep creases. They were caused by the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old. And they were trying to find out why I wasn't seeing properly. Right, that's blended out really nicely. Because as you know, green, blue and purple are the most difficult colours to create. And what have I got? Green and blue purples and grey. But, as you all know, that's the kind of colour scheme I've been loving just lately. And I've wanted to try Lethal Cosmetics for quite a while. Um, I love trying out different indie brands because I find that they're, they're so far ahead in terms of innovation and colour story and um, product range. You know, duochromes started off in the indie world. So, I do love supporting indie companies. I've wanted to try Lethal for quite a while. They're vegan and cruelty free, and they're based in Germany. Which was ideal for me up until the 31st of January, because it meant that as we were part of the European Union, I didn't pay any additional tax when it arrived. Now, who knows? <sighs> Bloody Brexit. But yeah, I'd, I'd wanted to try these for a long, long time. Um, and then Teresa is dead. used them on her channel and I was just like oh I need it because I just love the way it worked out now I'm just sitting back and checking that the shapes that I've got are the same both sides because I'm like a certain shishta I don't photoshop my results what you see is what I've done okay that's good 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 now I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm going to clean this brush off with. And then I'm going to go into the deeper olive. Put that a bit lower down. So I'm going to get that, that first one that I used was Habitat. I'm now going into Syncope. Which is the slightly deeper. Again, the kick up is real. But as I said, I'd rather have that and have one that doesn't come up on the brush. Fallout really doesn't fuss me because I do my base afterwards anyway. You do do your base first, either top off a little bit more than I did just then, or put some powder down to catch it. But if you're over 30, do your base afterwards, do yourself a favour. You do not want to be baking down here, it will not be friendly to you. Oh, this is really nice because I struggle here and here usually with super dry patches and yet that has just blended without any problem at all look at that lush, lush, tidy sound like a quickie blinder you ever watched him? 
He's hysterical. He, um, he's a middle-aged Welshman with a bald head and a beard. And he sits in his studio and basically takes the mickey out of people like flat earthers and people with other bizarre ideas of the world. You know, conspiracy theorists that come up with quite frankly ridiculous things where even I sit there and go really? Come on now. And he's just really funny to listen to. This is blending so nicely together. a lot. Hmm. Right, let's clean that brush off. Now I'm going to get still a Royal Hanganical Chic Pro, but this is what they call their eyeshadow brush, which is a more oval shaped blending brush because I don't want to, I want to control how high I take the next bit of shadow. Now do I want to go in with the grey or do I want to go in with... I don't think the grey is going to be deep enough. I think I'll go in with this one. Right, so I'm going to go in with Insomnia which is the beautiful indigo colour that jeans used to be before we started doing them bleach wash and stuff. Alright. I'm going to tuck this just in that outer corner there. Take it about halfway along. Just to deepen up the outer edge there. So that's what I mean about relaxing my brows and just making sure I've brought it up high enough. Just to give a little bit of extra definition just to that outer corner. I'll pop a little bit of that onto the lid. Hmm, I like this. I am really liking these. If the uh, if the shimmers are as good quality as the mattes, I'm going to be a very happy girl. I'm also going to be a very sad girl until I know what the situation is going to be with me ordering from. Europe. Unless I get a friend of mine in Europe, if I send them the money, then they post it to me as a gift. That might work. Because I didn't want to come out of the bloody EU anyway, so why should I get punished? All these bloody idiots that did vote to leave. Because we're never going to get back in now because there's no way the British public will agree to give up Sterling. And that's what they'd have to do to get back in. They'd have to agree to join the... Uh, Euro. Oh, I really like this, folks. Even though I am wittering on about politics, which is probably winding a lot of you up. Politics is important. Whichever country you're in, if you're old enough to vote, make sure you're registered now so that when it's time to vote, you know you're covered. There's only once I've missed out on voting, and that's because I had pneumonia and I was dying and couldn't physically get to the public station. Right, I'm going to use my Jeffrey Morphe JS24 lip brush because it gets right into that corner nicely to do the shimmers. But as always, never ever go into a pressed shimmer 
with a wet brush. So I'm going to start off by going into Rocket Fuel, which is this gorgeous silver. I'm just going to coat both sides of the brush with that. And this is my Slay All Day in Jasmine. I love my Slay All Days, but the Jasmine one for some reason dries out my jawline. Nowhere else, just my jawline. So I keep it for wetting my pigments instead. Got a little mirror I'm going to look down into here so that I stay on screen for you, but I can still see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to apply this. The inner third. First time I use shadows, I tend not to do cut crease because I want to see whether they have the opacity to cover the mat. And it would appear they do. So dry the brush off. That's pretty. Dip back into rocket fuel. I'm a rocket man, burning up the trees up here and home. Right, now I do have to stretch this out, otherwise what happens is rather than being blended onto the lid like this, the shimmer particles pack loosely into those deep creases and then as they dry through the day and I move my eye it all ends up cascading down which is not a good at all but you can see I didn't pull it out to my ear roll I only pulled it out as far as I needed to and I let go as soon as I was done right clean the brush now I'm going to go into Stargaze. Again, pat both sides of the brush, wet it. Always dry your ferrule off folks, the easiest way to do that is pop it into your knuckles and just spin it. Because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the bristles of your brush. Then it won't be a brush anymore. So I'm just going to pop this onto the middle third of the mobile lid, which, as you can see, is a very mobile, as in it moves. Quite a bit. <laughs> so what happens when you get older, folks? Mind you, I know 20 year olds who've never been overweight that have got loose eyelids. And I'm going to use the very tips of the bristles just to smudge where the two shimmers meet. See that? Oh, that's pretty. Dry the brush off, go back into Stargazer to do my other eye. I always get more fallout with this eye and I very often have to use more shimmer because it moves around a lot more. Which just goes to show you this eye was pulled around 40, nearly 41 years ago. And I'm seeing the effects of it. skin on your eyes is as delicate as tissue paper so please treat it the same way you would something that delicate because I swear once you get those deep creases they don't go anywhere and they just get deeper and make your life more and more difficult and again just using the tips of the bristles 
just to blur where the two colours meet. I really like that. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go and put some foundation and bits and bobs on. And then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, for me, sadly, I'm going to have to wait until I press record before I can chat to you again. For you, however, my darlings, it will be absolutely instant. So I will see you right now. Hello. Try the soap brow look. I'll make up my mind if I like it or not. Um, I use the Revolution Define and Fill Micro Brow Pencil in dark brown today. This is so pretty. Right. Back to my lethal palette. Super tempted to put that teal underneath. But I'm not. I'm going to be sensible. I am going to go in with the Insomnia shade, just on this flat top brush. Just to sort of link it at the edge there and bring it along the lower lash line. I am um, Regular viewers will know this, but I've always had very, very watery eyes. I've very rarely ever been able to put anything in my waterline. And the fibro makes it worse. So I tend to go for smoking out the lower lash line instead. And if I'm having a particularly runny eye day, or feels like they could go running and I can't do my winged liner I'll just put a little bit of extra here and just stamp just at the edge there where I'll put the wing and although you can't really notice it on camera it just ever so slightly deepens up the outer corner just there and it gives you the same effect that doing a wing liner would do, so it pulls the eye out and up, as you can see. And then I'm going to grab my favourite smoky brush, which is actually from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's chunky, so it's like the one I've just used but it's a lot fluffier. And I think I'm going to go into Habitat, which is that first green that I used. And I'm just going to use that to lightly buff the lower lash line, just to soften that line of insomnia and make it a little smokier. This is also very useful if you have creasy under eyes because if you've got that crease that runs sort of two or three mils below your eye, if you smoke your shadow out so that it kind of meets that particular line, it then looks like it's just the shadow rather than a creasy under eye. Another little tip for you. And now it's time for the highlight. We all know how much I love highlight. Right, so this is the shade Scatter, which has got a like a, a lilac pink reflect to it. You can see that. And this is just a cheap lip brush that I bought for me by about a decade ago. So let's put a little bit of this on the inner corner. Ooh. And run it along under the tear duct and just blend it in and fade it into the under eye. You can just do the inner corner like this if you want to. 
I just find on my eye shape it's much more flattering if I carry it along and just blend it into that under eye. Just opens the eye up that little bit more. Um, pop a little bit of this under the tail of my brow. going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on my face, do some mascara, some lippy, do something with my hair. I'll be back with my finished look. I am back. Okay, the mascara is the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. This highlight is just mwah, chef's kiss. The lipstick is another one of the Charlotte Tilbury's that my friend sent me, and this is in. Look at it the right way up, it helps. America's Sweetheart. So, this is my final look using the Lethal Cosmetics duo. And I've got to be honest. This is going to get a lot of use. I have, I deliberately chose the most difficult shades to create in today's look to try and get, to, just to see how well they will actually blend and they blended really nicely. Um, I have got no complaints whatsoever. Which is quite a nice situation to be in. Um, foundation, if you are wondering today, is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Water Finish in 1N0 Porcelain. Um, I picked that up from Depop because I wanted to try it. I've also got the original uh, Double Wear, the thick one which I have in 1C0 shell. Uh, but I thought I'd seen a lot of good things about the, um, the Double Wear Nude, the water weight one, and I just thought we're going to be coming into spring and summer, so I'm going to be looking more at wearing things like uh, my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea, uh, my Eat Cosmetics, the uh, Dream Cover, Open Dream Cover from Maybelline, um, and my Becca Aqua Luminous, which are lighter in terms of not just coverage but physical weight on the skin. Uh, the bronzer was my physician, physician's, physician's, I think I borrowed Trump's teeth, physician's formula in bronzer, and my Tarte in Exposed Blush, which I'm, I've got pan on both of those. I want to finish them. I'm super excited about that. Um, so yeah, this is... Hair's doing whatever it wants again. But this is my final look with the Lethal Cosmetics. Let me know what you think. Do you like? Do you not like? Have you tried Lethal Cosmetics? If you have, what are your favourite shades? So I can go and have a look and put them on a wish list once I know what's happening import tax wise with uh, Europe but there we go uh, if you are one of my 4F babies please check you are still subscribed because even if I'm in your news feed you might have been unsubscribed so just double check if the subscribe button is red again you've been kicked off the list so come back to me join me again let's have that fun that we always did I've missed you um, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I guess there must be something you kind of enjoyed. But um, if you too would like to join the 4F family, which is the nicest family on YouTube, feel free to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, select all notifications, jump through a flaming hoop, 
sign away. I don't know, the deeds to the last 20 foot of your garden. Whatever YouTube are asking for these days, and hopefully you will actually get told when I put a new film up. Speaking of which, there are a lot of new other films you can watch on my channel. So pick a playlist, put your feet up, and uh, indulge. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.